So in today's notes, we're going to take a look at negative exponents. Okay, so let's go to the calculator, for instance, and look at some things numerically. So if on the calculator, and I want you to do this with me, let's do 2 to negative 1. Okay, and we can see the answer is a decimal, 0.5. Math, change that to a fraction, so enter, enter, and it becomes 1 half. Let's do 3 to the negative 1. Oh, not 3 to the positive 1. 3 to the negative 1. And we get 0.3 repeating. Well, you should recognize that decimal math, enter, enter. It's the decimal for the fraction 1 third. You see a pattern? We'll do one more. 4 raised to the negative 1. Enter. 0.25, it's a decimal. They've all been decimals. Math, enter, enter. If you don't recognize that, decimal is a fraction. That's one-fourth. Okay? So let's put that on our note page. So on the calculator, we just did 2 to the negative 1, which was 1 half. 3 to the negative 1, was one third. And then four to the negative one was one fourth. Okay? They all become a fraction. And what you see here in this box, it says that when you raise any base to a negative exponent, you get a fraction. And that becomes one over the same base, but you're going to have a positive exponent. So that x to the negative 3 becomes 1 over x to the third, which is what happened over here. Our base was a 2. So it went from 2 to the negative 1 to 1 over 2 to the first. We just don't write 2 to the first. Base of 3 to the negative 1 becomes 1 over 3 to the positive 1. The exponent changes from a negative to a positive. Well, let's continue to do, now let's change it 3 to the negative 2. Because we kept doing ones, um, raising numbers to a negative 1, let's raise 1 to the negative 2. Well, 3 squared is 9, but 3 to the negative 2 is that decimal. Math, enter, enter, and it's 1 ninth. Okay? So this becomes 3 to the negative 2 becomes 1 over 3 to the positive 2, which is 1 ninth. So we make any term that has a negative power exponent, we change it to a fraction so that it becomes 1 over that same base, but then the power becomes positive. So our first statement says, with a negative exponent, anything in the numerator moves to the denominator. Because even though this is not written in terms of a fraction, you can put it over 1. So that's in the numerator, and then it's going to move to the denominator. Okay? With a negative exponent, okay, anything in the denominator is going to move to the numerator. Okay? And let's make one more note because so it moves from bottom to top or top to bottom. And we didn't actually do one of these yet but I see one below in number three, okay? Let's make a note before we look at the examples. In standard form, we know it has to be written um, from highest to lowest exponent and exponents, let's add to it, must be positive. So on the day three, you didn't know that. So we were allowing you to write your answers in terms of negative exponents. But now, your exponents must be positive in your answer. Okay, so let's take a look at number one. X to the negative second power 
will make your fraction bar. That right now is in the numerator, if you did put it over a 1. So this x to the negative 2 moves to the denominator of this fraction and becomes positive. And then we put it over or under a 1. So it's 1 over x squared. That's the same as all the ones we did above on the calculator. It's just those were numerical instead of algebraic. 4 to the negative 5. It becomes 1 over 4 to the 5th. Okay? And then reduce anything that's numeric, such as 4 to the 5th, and 4 times 4 is 16, times 4 is 64, times 4, 1,024. Anything that's numeric, you can go to your calculator, and let's type in the original problem, 4 to the negative 5th. And now type in our answer, 1 divided by 1,024. The decimals match, so we know we're correct. All right, now number three. Number three has the term with the negative exponent in a denominator, okay? So it didn't start as x to the negative 2 like number 1. It starts off as 1 over x to the negative 2. Anytime you see the negative exponent, make your fraction bar, and that's going to move to the numerator, x squared. This time the 1's going to be in the denominator. And then x squared divided by 1, well, anything divided by 1 is itself. So the answer is x squared. Okay. Number 4, see negative exponent, make the fraction bar. Okay, and all of these we can. So this 7 to the negative 2 in the denominator moves up top. So 7 to the positive 2 over 1. 7 squared is 49 over 1. And 49 divided by 1 is 49. Whenever you have a fraction, and I know we don't see the power to power because these are 1s, rewrite it first. Okay, power to power, you multiply the exponents. So remove the parentheses, it'd be x to the 1 times negative 5, which would be negative 5, and then 1 times the negative 5 would be y to the negative 5. Okay, what's negative up top moves to the bottom and becomes positive. What's in the bottom moves to the top, becomes positive. So it's y to the 5th over x to the 5th. Number six, so that's written in terms of power to power, so we have to remove the parentheses first. So it's x to the two times negative five, y to the negative one times five. So we have x to the negative 10, y to the negative times negative is positive five. So x to the 10th, y to the negative 5. Let's make our fraction bar. The only term or only part of that term that's going to move to the denominator is that x to the negative 10. That'll move to the denominator become positive. So though only those that have negative exponents move to the denominator, everything that has a positive stays in the numerator. Okay, so before we do number 7, Let's actually, I'm going to add a 6b and just do something like x squared y to the negative 3. So anytime you see negative exponent, make your fraction bar. So those that have a positive exponent, the variables that are part of that term, stay in the numerator. And the variables that have the negative exponent move to the denominator. So that becomes x squared over y cubed. 7 through 9 to finish. So we have a negative exponent in the numerator. So make your fraction bar. That's going to move to the bottom. So it becomes 1 over x7, y to the fifth. I just put in alphabetical order on the bottom because that's how we'll typically see it. Okay. Number 8. So I'm only going to circle the part that has a negative exponent. So make your fraction bar. The negative 2 will stay up top, 
because that doesn't have a negative exponent. And then the x to the fifth moves to the denominator and becomes x to the positive 5. And last one. So let's, as I mentioned, anytime it's power to power, remove the parentheses first by multiplying exponents. So um, I'm also, to make the math easier, this 6 halves is the same as 3 over 1. So I'm going to change that now and work with these smaller numbers. Okay? So now this becomes up top. I'm going to grab a different color. When I raise this to the negative third, it would be 3 to the negative third. x to the 3 times negative third is going to be x to the negative 9. And then y to the negative 2 times negative 3, a positive 6. Divided by 1 to the negative third, x to the negative 2 to the negative 3, would be x to the positive 6. And then y to the 4th to the negative 3 would be y to the negative 12. Okay, now I'm going to start moving some things around. And I don't have much room to the right, so I'm going to write it on this side. This 1 to the negative 3 would go up top and become 1 to the positive 3. This, if it's negative up top, will move to the bottom and become 3 to the positive 3. This can stay because it's positive. This is negative, so it's got to move down. This can stay, or actually, no, that's got to move. But this can stay. Y to the 6. Now I'm going to simplify. 1 cubed is 1, and we don't need to write that, because 1 times anything is itself. Y to the 12 times Y to the 6 would be Y to the 18th over 3 cubed, which is 27, and then x to the 6 times x to the 9th would be x to the 6 plus 9, 15. So the final answer is y to the 18th over 27, x to the 15th.